All right. We're recording. And with that, then, Kathy, if you don't mind, I'll let you kind of take it away and, and talk to us a little bit about kind of what you guys are doing with, with travel stuff. And then uh, we'll take some questions. Okay. Well, as you mentioned, travel is a big expense. And we have figured to go to Worlds with just our team, just the uh, hotel, food, and um, transportation is about $30,000. So that is a huge chunk of money. Um, and we are looking at ways to try and make that a little bit less. Um, so I just took some notes on what we've done in the past um, for like the in-state meal or meats and everything. We always check with the facility to make sure that you can bring food in. I believe most of them you can now. Uh, Kokomo does not have a place to eat, so we brought some of our own tables with us and we set them up, it was nice last year, so we just set them up outside uh, and we bring our own food. Uh, we had tried to have parents provide hot meals and snacks and stuff, but then we found that they were forgetting or the kid left it on the bus or we didn't know where it was. So we ended up just adding $25 to our yearly fee, which covers all of those meals. Uh, we go to Costco's and Sam's and buy water and Gatorade and uh, snacky type foods. And then we'll get either pizza or chicken tenders. We've done taco bars and fizzolis. Uh, I will let you know if you do fizzolis or a taco bar, tell them about half the amount of people that you have because you will have a ton of leftovers. Um, but we've just found that concessions are expensive and not real food. And the kids, especially the pit crew, tends not to eat um, if you don't make them come out and eat. So we've, that's what we found works best for us. Um, and one of the things that we're going to do at our robot reveal next week is we're going to have a snack collection drive so that um, we're going to ask parents to bring in snacky foods, non-perishables that we can take with us to competitions, have on the bus. Um, so some of those late nights, we're not, everybody's not hungry and cranky on the way home and asking to stop for dinner, we can throw a snack at them and say, go home and eat um, so that they're not so hungry. Uh, we're also asking kids to put snacks in their backpacks uh, or their coat pockets to bring with them and bring a water bottle. The, we were supplying water for our pit crew and I was going through a couple of cases each competition and last year I brought in a bunch of my old water bottles I said here you go they put their names on them and I quit buying water for them so that was kind of nice and a lot easier on me uh, and then for worlds what we did there is I had one of our parents she researched a bunch of different catering companies um, and we found the least expensive. I gave her a budget and she went under our budget and I believe the food was pretty good. Uh, and what we did is we shared that information with all the other teams that were going to World. So they had the opportunity to get in on that food. I had asked the caterers if they could give us a discount if we had multiple teams. I'm not sure that actually worked. I know one of them did split the fees, the delivery fees uh, between the teams that were there. but. Um, the only problems we had with that were just trying to figure out where we were going to eat because we kept getting different things from the venue if, if we could eat it inside or had to eat outside. Uh, outside one day we did have a homeless person come by and grabbed a meal and so we fed a homeless person that day. But I, I think that that um, worked out pretty well for us and that's what we're planning on doing this year because of course we know we, we're going to advance. We have to plan ahead. So. Um, my next thing I have is on hotels, and we always take a look at the first website to see what hotels are offered, and then we look around some more to see where we can um, get the best deals and whatever. Um, we, I think this year we're looking, and if we don't stay downtown in Detroit, we save about $60 per night per room, which really adds up when we've got 30 rooms booked and we're staying three nights um, so we save a lot of money that way uh, we do have to make sure that our bus is available to 
take us downtown. Um, we have some problems with pit crew wanting to be there a little earlier and a little later, and we're trying to find a workaround for that without having us drive up our minibus because nobody wants to drive it back home. Um, some of the other things that we do when we do make our hotel reservations, we call the hotel directly and we ask for the group rate, even if most hotels, they want you to have 10 rooms in order to get the group rates. But um, I have found if I've got eight rooms that they have been pretty good about giving me a better rate than the normal off the rack rate. And also when you talk to the hotel, you just, you know, those people, you can ask them all kinds of questions. Um, if you need a credit card authorization form, you can tell them that, you know, you're using this credit card, it's got this name on it, but this person's the one that's checking you in. It also helps out that they usually will ask for your room list so they know who's in what room and you know who's in what room before you get there or when you get there. Um, I know at Worlds, we moved a couple of years ago, we moved some people around and my key got demagnetized and I couldn't get into my room because I was not in the room that I was originally put in. So if you do do that and change rooms, you need to make sure that they know so you can get into your rooms. Uh, we also try and make our reservations early and ask for a late date to cancel the reservation. So if you're talking to the hotel, they're more willing to do that than if you're looking at Travelocity or whatever, you know, there you, you're kind of stuck with their deadlines. Uh, we already have our hotel for worlds reserved and they know that we won't know until two weeks in advance. They normally require a 30 day notice and they're giving us two weeks. The other thing that the world's hotel did for us last year is we asked them for a conference room and we used that where we played games and had movies and invited the other teams that were staying at the hotel to come and socialize with us, which a couple a couple people showed up, but everybody's pretty busy. Um, we tend not to make reservations for the parents, but we do try to make them aware of the hotels that we're staying in and let them book their own hotels and pay for them. And um, the last thing I have on that is, I've kind of mentioned it before, don't use the on online hotel booking sites. Um, they can bump you out of your room pretty quickly. That happened to us at Miami Valley last year and it was a scramble to try and find rooms and I left the teacher in charge with all of pit crew and all of the mentors. The rest of the chaperones were in a different hotel which was not the best thing but hey I found rooms and we shared a parking lot so we were pretty close. It wasn't so bad. Um, on buses, we talked to our bus driver last year after we were scrambling to find a bus and he said, you know what, call tomorrow and book it for next year and you can cancel when you find out. So that's one thing we, we have looked around. We have found our bus for this year um, and you want to look all over. Our bus from last year came from Michigan. So it wasn't just the local companies. The bus driver was awesome. He drove down from Michigan, picked us up, took us back up to Michigan, brought us home, and then drove back up there. So um, I recommend calling around to a lot of different places to see if they'll do that. We saved, I think, over $1,000 this year on our bus just by calling many, many places. Um, and then if you're a small team, if there's another small team that's with you or close to you, you might want to try and share a bus. I know we had talked to Shamrock Botics about sharing a bus with our large team and their small team last year, if they would have gone and that would have worked out great. Um, and then one other thing that I have, if you have a good relationship with your sponsors, which we had a fundraiser come in and talk to us, which she was awesome and just gave us some great ways to nurture um, the sponsors, you know, just send them a newsletter or send them an email every week. Hey, this is what we've been doing. And just keep them in the loop, invite them to your events. And then when it comes time to worlds, they feel like they know you and it's easier to go to them and say, Hey, you know, would you be willing? You sponsored us, you know, earlier on in the year, but now we're trying to raise some more money to go to worlds. Would you be willing to, you know, throw in a little bit more money to send us to worlds? Um, and yeah, I think that is about everything that I have. So are there any questions? Yeah, let me, uh, I'm 
Sorry, I'm unmuting <laughs> folks here. Um, I know it's a lot of uh, information to digest. Um, Kathy, thanks for sharing all that. Uh, I know that um, the three venues will be in, and Renee, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but hopefully in, in this rare case, I'm, I'm right. Um, the cafeterias will be available at our three venues for teams to gather to eat uh, lunches. Um, That's correct, but one of the caveats is that at one of our events at Tippy Canoe, we will not have um, access to any outlets because uh, there isn't enough electricity. If everyone plugged in a crock pot, it would throw the breaker and turn off the electricity in the ox gym. So okay. that's the the only problem we're dealing with this year. Okay. So uh, then for the uh, Tippa Canoe event, which will be at Lafayette Jefferson High School, if um, any of you are attending that event and your parents are planning on uh, getting food, that would probably be a good one to plan cold lunches. Uh, uh, you know, um, sandwiches and things like that. And for each of our events, we do offer, like, there are food ordering options um, that we work with the venues to try and provide to teams. Um, so, for instance, you know, at the Tippy Canoe event, typically we'll have, like, spaghettis or arnies um, where teams can order food. Um, and then, you know, at St. Joseph, like, they have Nelson's, like, chicken nuggets sort of stuff. Um, you know, at at Kokomo, the Career Center is going through and providing food ordering options, and that's actually probably a pretty decent deal on like pizza if you wanted to order through them, because um, they get a discount. And then uh, at the Center Grove event, they have a number of food options for teams as well. And we're also looking at doing food options for load-in this year, which in the past is not something that we've prioritized. But well, we've gotten some pretty positive feedback about teams who are like, our children are starving on Friday, you know, as we're loading in, what are our options? And so that was something that one of the committees brought forward and I passed along to each of the events. Yeah, and I know that's one thing that uh, we had made a note of too, that um, there, when you have an event, uh, the load-in night, any mentor who is with a, a local team, local to that venue, uh, they're coming straight from work and uh, and they're hungry or, or whatever. So, yeah, so I know um, at least the Center Grove event will have uh, some options there. I think all three will have some, some uh, load-in night options, which will be nice. But, yeah, th so there are options if, if you're, if you're kind of new and you don't have the, the parent organization uh, kind of up and going and, uh, or they don't, or it's too far, or they don't feel, you know, they're not going to be coming to the event, so they can't really bring food. Yeah, there are some of those pre-order type things, and that information will come out um, when you, when lead and alternate mentors get the emails uh, regarding uh, the, the details of the event. Um, and, uh, and then on the hotel rooms, uh, teams, that, teams that surprisingly get um uh an invitation to the world uh maybe they weren't planning on it and they find themselves the you know third robot on the the state championship alliance or uh they're you know rookie all-star and they didn't you know think that you know they were in line for it or you know or didn't think that they would you know whatever, whatever. there will be teams that um might not be planning on going to detroit that find themselves in a position to go to Detroit, one of the things that we'll try to do at the state championship is um, if there are teams that have planned on going that don't get their ticket punched, we can try to connect those groups together uh, and then maybe there might be a situation where a team has some rooms and now they're not going to need them and instead of just releasing them, we could try to get those rooms released to uh, the team that finds themselves uh, needing, <laughs> needing hotel rooms. Uh, but definitely, um, it's better to plan to go all the way to the World Championships and cancel reservations. Um, but uh, I think as Kathy said too, just make sure that um, whether it's the charter bus or the hotel rooms that you're, you're looking at getting, 
just make sure you know the deadlines for when you have to drop those. Um, there's unfortunately for us, there's no way around it. Um, we're just we're two weeks away from world, and uh, so the state championship, uh, we won't know uh, until um, you know probably about 10 or 15 minutes after the awards are done. Uh, we won't know that final list. Uh, so there'll be some at-large teams that all of a sudden find themselves going to Detroit. Uh, any other questions? Hey, Chris. Yep. I would, I would like to mention that we have had problems in the past where, like, one team who didn't end up advancing to Worlds tried to transfer their rooms to a team that was advancing. And because of the way they booked them, like, the hotel would not allow the one team to release them to the other team. Oh. Um, yeah, and I don't know if that was because, like, they already had a waiting list or, or what, but that was a kind of weird situation. Okay. That, uh, I yeah. ran into that last year, too. They didn't want me to transfer the Shia Marquardt to Fearsome Gear, so I kind of worked around it and didn't yeah. tell them what I was doing and got Good them job. transferred. <laughs> Perfect. Fantastic. But, but that, that is one of the weird situations that could happen. Smaller teams have also been able to, um, on, a, on occasion, uh, when you've had a small, maybe rookie team or a uh, situation where they've found themselves going to Worlds and needing a bus, there have been a few situations where um, other teams that are going have room on their bus. And I know um, that's happened, where teams have shared uh, seats on the charter bus. Um, so we'll try to work with everybody and try to, at the state championship anyway, we'll try to make sure that as, those, as the, it's all falling into place, we'll try to bring groups together so they can try to get that. Now, just very quickly, because this is a topic really for a completely different call, is that, you know, when those invitations are announced at the state championship, uh, Renee and I will be standing down on the field with envelopes and you pretty much have to be very ready very quickly in a very short period of time uh, to be able to say yes or no um, uh, to accept the invitation or decline the invitation um, so that we can if you if you're going to decline the invitation then we have to be prepared to you know go down to the next team available. So. The and the envelopes are important because they contain the shipping information to advancing the world, um, which as a rookie team or whoever, whichever rookie team would advance this year, um, we do already have a crate that 234 has um, where you'd be able to create up your robot and ship it out uh, via 234 support. So that's yeah, exciting. The, the rookie all-star team. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. And that's definitely, you know, topic for another call, but good to yeah. mention. Yep. Any other questions about food, travel? Uh, anybody got questions for Kathy or us or any of the other mentors here? Nope. Very quickly, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna share real quick on my screen. Uh, it, this is a link, that, uh, this is a form that the link to it is in the mentor update email. Uh, I've been sending this out for the last few weeks. Um, we're up to 212 uh, responses. Uh, would minimum like to get to 300. Uh, if, if you could, make sure you go back uh, and um, look at that mentor update email. It's the student impact survey. This information is really crucial for us to, to have so that when we're going in front of potential sponsors or current sponsors, uh, and uh, potential programs that might want to start first teams, this is really good data for us to say, here's what's happening in Indiana. Here's what our students are saying, that the impact of the program is having on them. Uh, and it, it's really, really crucial. So um, it does take a few minutes to take. Uh, uh, we're at about, like I said, I think we're at about 212. I'd love to have at least 300. Of course, if we get more than 300, that's even better. Uh, but uh, it doesn't ask for um, uh, personal, like, name, you know, full names or anything like that, unless the student is 18 years old, and at the end of the survey, if they're 18 and they want to receive the Indiana First update email, uh, which is a different email, 
but if they want to receive that, then they can submit their name uh, and email to us. Other than that, uh, it's th there's not uh, private information gathered. Uh, we don't sell this information. Um, we we use it internally, and then we create generic like uh, pie charts, bar graphs, things like that that we put out to uh, sponsors and stuff. We don't share all the the drill down uh, um, information. We just we create charts from it. So. I wanted to share that with you guys, and that's a that's a big one. So if you can get that out there, that's great. Um, and anything else for the good of the cause? It's about six twenty-five. Uh, definitely can take other questions if they're not food related. Um, I will say on the waterfront, you're going to all hear that in our pits there's to be no food and water or beverages. Uh, we will be fairly lenient if it's bottled water. Um, our drivers, those pit crews and drive teams, uh, you will, they will find themselves getting in at 8 a.m. into their pits, and then before they know it, they will realize that they've been in the pits or out on the field for six hours, and they haven't had anything to eat or drink. So make sure you do have some water for them. Um, parents, if you're there, that's a real good thing. Um, if you have a, a parent on the team that's there, not by the pit, just ask the kids and the mentors if they've had anything to drink. And if they haven't, make them drink water. Um, it was kind of something I unofficially did uh, the first few years. I was a mentor on Red Alert. I just would go down and just say, hey, guys, have you had anything to drink? Almost every time they'd say, oh, no, I haven't had anything to drink for two hours. So, uh, especially the drive team and the pit crew. Um, so, and then they won't have a lot of time, the drive team that is, they won't have a lot of time to eat. Uh, and so um, that's why it's also hey. to make sure that you've got ways to quickly feed them. Yeah. And, and also, um, please, no peanuts or nuts of any kind uh, in the team pit. Yeah. Um, there are times where, like, I completely understand that snacks, snacks are okay. Um, for the you know pit crew and drive team, um, we we again will have those signs that say no food and drinks. But like we we realize that you people are reasonable and that those things are fine. Um, but we are asking for no um, air. We have an airborne uh, peanut allergy, uh, you know, contact that we need to make sure is safe and good to go. Uh, and so we can't you know make sure that the venues because their high schools are 100%. A nut free zone, uh, but we can make sure our teams are aware that we are asking them not to have um, nuts in the the pit area. And so please make sure to pass that along. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, we do. I know uh, we do have a couple of students who have extremely uh, scary sensitive peanut allergies. So um, thanks for that. Anything else? Chris, I did send my notes to you, so you can have that in your email if you want to share it with everybody else. Yeah, great. Yep, I'll put that out to everybody, uh, and we'll, uh, this is being recorded, uh, so we'll try to get this out, uh, too, to the, the teams that couldn't be on the call, uh, and uh, go from there. We are uh, a week from tonight. Uh, it's the very last stop build day um, for first robotics competition. Uh, so um, those of you, just so you know, that means at midnight, so you can build all day Tuesday and you can build into the evening on Tuesday, uh, but at 11.59.59, um, you uh, have to have your robot in a bag. Uh, there were tags that came in your, um, in your kit of parts, uh, and there's, there's, you should have a uh, robot lockup form. Uh, I can send um, a PDF out to you guys. If you don't have one, email me, let me know. I can, there's uh, copies of it on the first website uh, in the resource area, but we can get that up to you if you need it. That'll be important for you to use to track um, that week leading up to each event. You will have six hours of unbagged time and that you'll need to track that on that, that lockup form where you take it out, and then you put it back and, uh, and you keep track of the time. Um, and uh, about 629, I think that kind of wraps things up. Um, again, don't hesitate to email me if you've got questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll certainly try to put you in touch with the people who do. Um, if you're having any issues with your dashboard or registration, 
uh, of students or mentors, let me know. Uh, I can, I usually just call team support on your behalf because you guys are busy. Um, and so I can do that. Um, and I know that the team registration is a very cumbersome process and it's not fun <laughs> um, to stick with it. Uh, remember, parents have to um, register their kids. They have to apply to your team. You accept them. And then they have to log back in one more time uh, to accept the Indiana first consent and release. The first time around, they accept the first consent and release. They can see that, but they won't see ours until they've been accepted on the team by you and then log back in. It can all be done in a matter of minutes if they're all like the same place. Like if at your school, you got a computer lab, uh, but it, it really can be uh, cumbersome, uh, especially if the parents don't have internet access or maybe a little technology um, skittish. Um, but let me know. We can try to help you and do what we can. Well, I appreciate everybody calling in tonight uh, to listen. Uh, I, Kathy, thank you so much for. You're welcome.